feels good in here. If you have your Bibles, family, go ahead and turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Just continue standing. I'm excited about this new series that we're kicking off called The Gift. That Jesus Christ is our gift, amen? Come on, I know you're waiting for Christ Christmas to come and maybe you're looking for some materialistic, but there's no gift better than the gift of Jesus, amen? And we receive his gift on today. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, I'm going to read through. Just remain standing. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of his peace, there will be no end. Come on, somebody. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I said before, Jesus is your gift. Jesus is your gift. I'm being reminded in this season, family, that we can struggle a lot with, with trying to be efficient in all areas. See, what this season reminds me, though, family, it's, it's, it's the in-between season that a lot of times we can feel as though that we're waiting in a cold waiting room. Anybody ever been in a cold waiting room? And you're waiting for the promise to happen, but you're feeling as though that Christmas is not coming because I'm waiting. And just because this, the event didn't take place or just because of what you're waiting for didn't happen, a lot of times we can feel as though that Christmas has been canceled. I believe a lot of us is in a season right now that this season can feel like Christmas is canceled because you're caught in the waiting. God, when is my breakthrough? God, when is my healing? God, God, when are you going to visit my home and the very thing that I'm praying for, the very thing that I'm talking to you about? When is Christmas going to visit my home? Is anybody in here with me today? But what Christmas reminds me of family is that despite what your situation may look like, Jesus can be birthed even in a dark place. And it reminds me that every Christmas that my faith begins to rise because just in a dark place, Jesus can be birthed. So maybe you're in a season right now and it doesn't feel as though that Christmas can be birthed in this place. I'm here of an understanding to let you know as a pastor and as your friend, Christmas is not canceled. Because Jesus is the gift that keep on giving. So wherever you may find yourself today, I speak over the enemy today. I prophesy over your life today. I begin to declare the blessings over your life, the blessings that God is getting ready to rain. Because even in that dark place, life is coming because Jesus can be birthed in a dark place. Life can be birthed right there. Just turn to your neighbor and say, Christmas is not canceled. If you're taking notes, that's actually the title for today. Christmas isn't canceled. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We take this moment to receive your word. Let us leave this place better than we have came in. Let us sit with you, dwell with you. Give us something that's going to draw us closer to you. Maybe our faith needs to be increased today. Maybe you need to touch our hope today. Whatever it may be, we ask that you give it to us. We're desperate for your presence. We're desperate to dwell with you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss our celebration youth, middle and high school students. Family, there's nothing like a, a, a kid on Christmas morning. I'm always reminded during this season that, man, the struggle for a kid 
to, to, to actually begin to release their Christmas wish list. Come on, can I take you back for a moment? You release your Christmas wish list. And that moment between releasing your Christmas wish list into Christmas morning, the struggle of a youth, a kid that has to sit in the season of the in-between. You remember that season of being in the in-between and just waiting? I, I'm being reminded because even Princeton, you guys know my little one, Princeton, right? He has his advent calendar. He begins to check all each day, December the 2nd, December the 3rd, and he's still asking us, even after December 3rd, it's Christmas tomorrow, Daddy. It's Christmas tomorrow. We keep saying, no, son, it's the 2nd. No, son, it's the 3rd. He's checking it all. He understands, but the tension, the little bit of patience that he has, this advent calendar is really not helping him out, to be honest. <laughs> And even Princeton, I can find him because he's caught in the in-between. He's caught in the in-between of knowing that his mother, because it really wasn't his father, it was his mother who promised him all of these gifts that he's going to get if he'd be a, a, a good boy. So he's caught in the in-between. And because Christmas hasn't arrived yet, Princeton thinks that Christmas will never arrive. Because Christmas hasn't arrived yet, so now he has the frustration. He just say, it's Christmas. Cancel, Daddy. Because Christmas hasn't came yet. Because he understands his father said something, or to be honest, his mama said something. So he's waiting for that promise to happen. But I'm being, I'm being reminded that the longer that he waits, he actually believes that now Christmas it's canceled. Because see, a lot of us can struggle just like Princeton. A lot of us can struggle with waiting. A lot of us can struggle of being in the season of the in-between. See, if you're like me, I don't like waiting for a whole lot of stuff. Come on, I don't like waiting for a text message. Oh man, that iPhone mystery bubble, come on, it drives me crazy. Don't text me and just stop texting. I need to know what's getting ready to come. That, that iPhone mystery bubble just, I don't like waiting at airports. Come on, babe, security. You know I try to time it down. I don't like getting it too early, but I definitely don't want to get there too late because I don't like waiting, Casey. Pray for your pastor, even at a traffic light. That car in front of me, as soon as the light turned green, I'm not, I'm not that bad, Julius, but I give you 1.5 seconds. If you don't hit the gas, I'm blowing the horn. Get the gun. I don't like waiting, but you're the same way, though, family. We're in a society who doesn't like waiting. We don't like staying in the in-between. Here's something that a lot of us have in common. Matter of fact, not a lot of us, all of us. You're caught in the in-between right now. You're caught in the in-between of waiting for your promise to happen. You're caught in the in-between that, that your heavenly father released a promise over your life, that God spoke something, and now you're waiting for it to come to pass, and you're, you're, you're in the in-between. And when you're caught in the in-between, here's what the enemy would love to say to you, that Christmas is canceled because it hasn't happened yet. But family, I'm here to remind you in this Christmas season, this Advent season, here's what the anticipation reminds us as we're waiting, it's just not why we wait, okay, it is, but it's how we wait. How are you waiting for God to do something in your life? How are you responding to the very thing? How are you waiting? Are you in with anticipation? Is your faith high? Is the expectation high? Are you moving in your life of knowing that God is getting ready to do something in your life? It's just not why you're waiting, but it's how you're waiting. Your waiting has meaning. Your waiting has a purpose. When we wait with a posture of knowing that God is getting ready to do something, you know that God is getting ready to move in your life. And here's what I want you to take on today, my friend. You got to work what you have. You got some hope today. You got some love today. You got to learn how to wait. You got, you got to learn how to work what you have. If you want to take anything that I say today, please take this down because this is what God is tell, telling me. The only thing harder than waiting on God is wishing that you had. 
Don't move too quick and miss what God is doing in this season of waiting for your healing. Don't move too quick of, of, of taking the, the, the problem in your own hand or the, the healing in your own hand or the breakthrough in your own hand because you can miss what God is doing. Now, one of the hardest things is being in a regretful season of wishing I would have waited for the hand of God. Can I say this to do? Maybe God has you right where he wants you at in this Christmas season. Maybe God is getting ready to do something amazing in your life. But God has you right where you need to be. So I say it again, my friend, my friend. So while you wait, work what you got. Because Christmas isn't cancer. I want to share three points with you today. I want to share three points as we begin to set up this series leading into our Christmas time today. But before we get into it, I, I just I, I can feel the anointing and the grace in this season for this house and in many other houses and families of the enemy of saying that Christmas is canceled this year. But here's my first point. Christmas isn't canceled because hope is still your anchor. You have hope in Jesus and if you still have hope in Jesus, there is still hope in that situation. Come on, somebody. When you put your faith in him, it says this in Hebrews 6, 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Can I ask you a question today, celebration? Can I ask you a question? Is your hope in what you have? Or is your hope in the one who gave it to you? See, when we begin to put our hope in the things that's in our life, and when those things begin to get unraveled, when those things begin to get a little bit of turbulence, our faith begins to get a, a little bit rocky. But what I'm finding my understanding, the more I grow deeper with Christ, come on family, talk back to me today, the more I grow deeper in, when storms come in my life, my faith, my hope is not in the things I have in life. My faith and my hope is not in what the things that God has brought in my life. As long as I put my faith in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what the storms may do. Why? Because I got an anchor in here. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Who's your anchor today? You got to tell yourself, who's my anchor today? Because I'm not going to allow my, my boat to be tipped over because I got an anchor in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Put your anchor in Jesus Christ. My second point is this, family. Christmas isn't canceled because Jesus can make peace with broken pieces. In here, family, we can have a lot of broken pieces. Come on. Oh, let me lean into that. It's, a, it's quiet as a church mouse in here right now. Hope I'm not stepping. Well, maybe I should step on some toes. I need to do that a little bit more, Julius. Because we have a lot of broken pieces. What is your broken pieces today? So you can have a lot of broken pieces, or maybe you don't have enough pieces, or maybe you have some confusion, confusion pieces, come on, or maybe you have some uncertainty pieces, but I'm being reminded today as I'm studying this message, and what I love about this, the birth of Jesus Christ is that he can take those broken pieces and turn it into whole peace. So now with the understanding that you have is that it's not what I need to do with myself with the broken pieces. I need to release my broken pieces to God and watch God do what he's getting ready to do with those broken pieces. You may have broken pieces in your family. Give it to God. You may have broken pieces in your marriage. Give it to God. You may have broken pieces in that career or your health. Hear me today. God can take broken pieces and turn it into a masterpiece if you allow him to do it. See, some of us stay stuck too long because we're waiting for more pieces to come in our life. We're waiting to be in control. If I can just get this piece, that'll make things all right. If I can get this piece, that's going my marriage is going to be bad. If I can get this piece, then I won't be single anymore. And I can find Mr. Boaz. Come on, somebody. If I can just get the pieces in my life, my life is going to get better. God is not waiting for extra pieces to come in your life. He is the extra piece. He is the piece that's in your life. He is the one that's going to do the thing. So while you're waiting, wait for him and walk with him because he's the missing piece of what's getting ready to happen in your life. 
God can take broken pieces. See, I even love our, can, can, can I share a love story? Come on, about to get some brownie points. Come on, real quick, Pastor Brendan. And I need y'all to say, ooh, ah, so like it's Christmas, so I need brownie points. But I remember when me and Pastor Brendan first, first met, teenage love, come on, teenage love. And Pastor Brenda, we met over a friend's house. She was putting a puzzle together. Come on. And you know what I did. Come on. I got four eyes now. Come on. I lean in. Walked over to her. And I began to help her put the puzzle together. And I, and I love this story because we always talk about this story. She was struggling with the missing pieces. Come on. And I was coming to rescue her. <laughs> And I remember leaning in and, and she was put in a, but there was a lot of pieces missing. But we had a few pieces. And based on those few pieces, we were able to catch a glimpse of what the picture was getting ready to evolve into. See, we only had a few pieces. We didn't have all the pieces, but we had a few pieces. And a few pieces allow us to see what the future may be. And all I'm telling you today, while you're waiting for more pieces to come in your life, you have enough pieces in your life right now to believe that God can work a miracle in your life. That there's pieces around you right now that God is saying, I know you're waiting for that, but if you would just give me that peace, I'll give you peace. If you would just give me that brokenness, I'll give you peace. God can use the brokenness in your life to release the very thing that you need to step into the next season. He can do it. You might not have all the pieces together, but you have some pieces for God to work with. Can I talk to the Murray folks in here? Come on. You have enough pieces in your marriage to God to take you to a, a, a higher level of intimacy. You have enough pieces in your marriage for you guys' communication to get better. You have enough pieces in your marriage to actually parent those kids that's getting on your nerves. Come on, touch my head, Father. Yeah. Anoint me today, because they're driving me crazy. For relationships and their family in this holiday season, whatever, you might have a dysfunctional family, but God can still take those broken pieces and give you peace in this holiday season. If we will release the broken piece to him. He can turn it into a masterpiece. I love this scripture. Write this down, 1 Peter 3 and 10. This is one of Pastor Brenner's favorite scriptures. For the one who wants to love life and to see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit and let him turn away from evil and do what is good. Let him seek peace and Pursue it. Whew. Peace is not something that you're trying to go after. Peace is something that's a gift that's given to God, but you also, it's in you, but you got to walk and pursue it as well. It is a gift. You don't have to chase after it first. Let me teach this. Gift, peace is a gift. It's eternal. God has placed it inside of you. You are working from a place of victory, not a place to get victory. So when Jesus inside of you, it's not always about going and trying to go get it, but here's the action, here's the faith. You also have to choose peace. You also have to make sure that you're determined each and every day that I'm going to choose peace and I'm not going to choose frustration. I'm going to choose peace and I'm not going to choose dysfunction. I'm going to choose peace on a Monday morning. Come on, somebody. I'm not, they're going to get on my nerves on that job, but I'm going to choose peace today. I'm going to pursue you. The more I pursue God, he will take my broken pieces and give me the eternal peace that I need in my life. You got to pursue it on a Monday morning. When you wake, wake up on tomorrow, pursue peace. Yeah. But pursue it from a place of victory, not a place to try to attain it. Yeah. You already have it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying today. 
That's what I'm teaching today. When you walk with Jesus, you got the victory. Come on. When you walk with Jesus, your deliverance is here. When you walk with Jesus, you are in the process of Jesus burning and consuming everything that doesn't belong in your life. And when he steps into your life, peace comes in your life. When he steps into your life, love comes into your life. When he steps into your life, he will take your broken pieces and give you wholeness. Today, my friend, Stop waiting for peace and walk in it. This holiday season, Christmas season, stop waiting for peace. Walk in it. Attain it. Grab it. Become one with it. It's not out there. It's right here. Choose it. My third point today, and I'm going to invite the team back up. Christmas isn't canceled because joy has a sound. While waiting, family, never stop releasing the sound of joy. Joy has a sound. I love this in Psalms 100, verse 1 and 5. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come on. While waiting, make a joyful noise. While waiting, serve the Lord. Watch that. This, matter of fact, let, let me turn, because I want you to catch this. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Serve the Lord, make a joyful noise. Come into his presence, make a joyful noise. Know that the Lord, he is God. Make a joyful noise. What type of noise are you making in this season? My heart goes out to you today because here's my prayer. Are you making a joyful noise? For the very thing that you're waiting for, is it a joyful noise? Because when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, we are making a joyful noise. I want to share this with somebody because maybe this holiday season, family, while you're waiting for Christmas to come, Hear this today. Keep things simple. I don't know who's that for. Keep things simple. Don't, don't, don't try to, because this holiday season can be a lot of planning, a lot of running, a lot of impress, and trying to impress, impress people. Keep things simple. Do what's going to bring joy to you so that you can bring joy to other people. Do what God is speaking to you, not what people is speaking to you. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. That's a joyful noise. Hear that today. Not overdoing something in a season. Maybe God is saying keep it simple, and that's the noise that he wants you to make. Because in this season, there's so many of us that there's something out there that wants to drain you in this season. And maybe the very thing that's looking to drain you is the very thing that's making you do over and above. And God, maybe God is not calling you to do that. Maybe he's calling you in this season to sit with him more and keep it simple. Another thing is make, set some healthy boundaries. I just want to teach you a little bit for, because I want you to continue to make a joyful noise. And maybe God is saying, set some healthy boundaries. Set some healthy boundaries. But before things get hectic, choose joy. Before things get a little bit crazy, parking lot, at the mall, thank God for Amazon. Set some healthy boundaries. Maybe you're preparing for family. Set some healthy boundaries, family. Because I want you to choose joy. And hear this today. Choosing joy. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself this season. The pressure is not on you to produce. The pressure is on you to receive who Jesus is in your life. He's the creator. He's the producer. It is impossible to do everything perfectly. 
So don't put that pressure on yourself that I got to serve my family this way and I got to give my kids this and I got to... We can put a lot of pressure on ourselves and hear me today, that pressure will begin to drain your joy. God is not looking for what you can do. God is looking for who you, for, for the attention that you will give him. Because it's from there where you will receive your joy. Because joy is not a feeling. Joy is a choice. Pursue it today. Let us stand to our feet. While waiting, choose joy. While waiting, walk in his peace. While waiting, Christmas is not cancer. I want to close with this family. I love it. I love the words of Murray when she had the encounter with the angel. And this is Murray having an encounter and, and the angel began to tell her, that, hey, 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 you're getting ready to be pregnant. And Murray is blown like, it ain't me. I got one man. It's not me. But I want to read the scripture because I really do believe, even for our online family, I believe there's something in this scripture that's going to set us up for what God is speaking in this season. I'm going to read through it. It says, she was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Murray, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great. Be called a son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever and no, ever, no end ever to his kingdom. Watch this, family. Murray said to the angel, but how? But how? You ever felt like you've been in a season where God would speak a, a promise and you're caught in an in-between and your response is, but how? How, God? How are you going to do that? You see these broken pieces around? You see this impossible situation? You see the struggle? But how? Christmas canceled, God. Not this house. Not this year. But how? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Jesus. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God. We've been praying this for you today, family. The only way Mary was able to experience the impossible, the Holy Spirit had to come over her. Maybe you're in a situation right now, you've been asking yourself, but how? How's the next going to happen? How's the breakthrough going to happen? And here's my response today. The Holy Spirit is hovering over you. The Holy Spirit is over that situation. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Verse 36, and did you know that your cousin Elizabeth could see the son, old as she is? <laughs> Everyone called her barren. <sighs> and here she is, six months pregnant. God is moving in the midst of this family. If you would look to your left and to your right, last Sunday we shared so many wins of Impact Sunday. So many stories, so many testimonies. We couldn't even share them all, family. And we will continue to do our best to share them all. But I want you to know that me and Pastor Brenda, we, 
We feel the weight. We see it. We hear the struggle. We pray for you guys dearly. But God is moving in the neighborhood. What may look like it's burn in that situation, trust me, God has already touched somebody else and he's getting ready to touch your family in this season. Take hold of these words. Nothing you see is impossible with God. If you will invite God into the situation, the impossible is always available. And look what Murray said, and I'll end it here. And Murray said, yes, I see it all now. What she couldn't see, she had to receive, and God will begin to open her eyes. Maybe you need to take another look at that situation and invite God into it. Maybe you need to just lean in a little bit more and allow God, the Holy Spirit, to hover over it. I really do believe that God is readjusting your perspective of that situation right now. I don't want to scream it at you. Is it okay if I speak it like this to your family? Put your mind on that situation right now. And just begin to thank God that the impossible is still available. That when he shows up, he has the solution. He is the eternal source. He is the one that can bring the missing piece and make it whole. That there's nothing too hard for your God. That he's bigger than every battle. He's taller than every giant. His strength outlasts anything that the enemy can do. Your God is undefeated. He has never experienced a loss. And he won't experience one right now. That when the enemy thought he would win, your heavenly father had already had a plan in place to release his son into this earth so that you and I will have an eternal relationship with him. He defeated death for you. So that situation right now is crumbs in the eyesight of God. It is not too big. He can do it. He can do it. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this moment. We thank you that Christmas is not canceled this year. We thank you that we take a moment to lean in and say thank you. You have always been good. You have always been here. That we will not allow the disruption to distract us for, for who you are. You are still good. We thank you for your love today. Thank you for your peace today. We thank you for your son, Jesus, today. As we wait in the in-between, we wait with a posture of knowing you are a God that cannot lie. We receive your gift on today. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Before we go back into a time of worship, I want us to take up our moment, our offering, stay in this posture of worship with the giving of our tithes. Going to invite our, our usher team down. The, the information will be on the screen. As we get ready to go back into worship, family, what I love about last Sunday, we had our impact offering. I want to continue to, to invite you into this moment of hearing the, the many testimonies and the, the many wins that's happened even for our online family. What better way, family, to continue to move into the, in, into the new year with a heart of generosity? Man, I love the scripture found in John 3.16. Come on, we know it, family. God so loved the world that he gave. 
Man, what an awesome posture of what giving is all about. Whatever you love, you give. Whatever you love, you sacrifice. Whatever you love, you go above and beyond. It's the beauty of this house. So I want you to take some time and even ask God as you get ready to go back into worship, man, God, what does generosity look like in my life? Your word says that it's better to give than receive. Your word says that you give seed to the sower. Let generosity lead you in this season because when generosity goes first, the impossible is always developed. Let me pray over the offer. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for the many ways of giving even right now, but even most importantly, we lift up this seed unto you for the tithe, for the offering, for the, the above and beyond, the impact offering that's going to make a difference right here in the DMV area. We can do so much when we put you at the center. Thank you for your grace that's in this house. Thank you for leading us. We release this seed over to you. We ask that the houses that's giving, we ask that you bless it, manifold, triple folded, Lord God. Do what only that you can do. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. What a beautiful prayer to be able to enter into a space where we get to experience the presence of God every single week. And in this season of the Christmas season, we're able to experience the gift. And this sermon series, The Gift, reminds us about what this season is about. I spent some time this weekend at Tyson's, and there are a lot of things that people think this season is about, but we know the truth, and the truth is, that the gift was given to us in this season. This is a time that we're able to um, experience that and express that. And so we invite you um, in this time of announcements, by the way, I'm Casey, nice to meet you. In this time of announcements, you can um, use this time every Sunday to invite other people to learn about the gift and be able to hear the truth of Christ, amen? So next Sunday we will be here experiencing the gift. And then the following Sunday on Christmas, we are going to be doing church at home. And so we invite you for each of the Sundays to invite others to join you. Amen. Sarah. Thank you very much, Elvis. <laughs> My name is Derek Carter. I serve here on the guest services team alongside Casey and many others. Um, as you know, we have a very amazing outreach team who's working hard year round to give to a couple local uh, community um, teams that we serve with, including the Carpenter Shelter and a local elementary school. This season, they're working especially hard to get coats out there. Uh, there, this is our final Sunday for the coat drive. There are 12 tags left out in the lobby at the amazing gift, uh, gift box display with the Christmas trees that you probably saw as you came in. So on your way out, if you haven't already, there's still time, grab a tag. It has the name of the coat and the size to purchase, and you can bring that back next Sunday uh, for service. If you're online with us and you're like, gee, Sarah, I'm not there to grab a tag. How can I still participate? You definitely can via the information on the screen you'll be seeing. You can donate to our outreach team and every dollar you give to our outreach team goes to stuffing our food bags. The elementary school we partner with recently had an influx of new families who could really use our help. So all of that money that you're gonna be sending um, via the online options will be going straight to those families in need this holiday season. With that, thank you all for joining us today. I'd love to send you out there to grab a tag and to donate. So let me give you a blessing as you head out our doors today for uh, the week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you great, great peace today and always. Thank you for joining us, joining us family. Have a wonderful, blessed week.